They may take our links. Life, but they'll never take our links. On Sunday, Twitter announced that they will no longer allow free promotion of certain social media platforms on Twitter. They go on to list the platforms that are restricted. Facebook, Instagram, Mastodon, Truth Social, Tribal, Noster, and Post. And they weren't joking. Reports of suspended accounts started coming in. So let's talk about this, and I also have a solution for you. Let's take a look at this new policy that Twitter posted. It starts off by saying, Twitter is where the public conversation is happening. We'll come back to that in a minute. What is a violation of this policy? At both the tweet level and the account level, we will remove any free promotion of prohibited third-party social media platforms, such as linking out using URLs to any of the below platforms on Twitter or providing your handle without a URL. Prohibited platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Mastodon, Truth Social, Tribal, Post, and Noster, as well as third-party social media link aggregators such as Linktree and Link.bio. And here are some examples of posts that would be in violation of this policy. Follow me at username on Twitter, username at mastodon.social. Check out my profile on Facebook and then linking to your Facebook profile. Accounts that are used for the main purpose of promoting content on another social platform may be suspended. Additionally, any attempts to bypass restrictions on external links to the above prohibited social media platforms through technical or non-technical means, URL cloaking, plain text obfuscation, Obfus obfuscation, that's a hard word, is in violation of this policy. This includes, but not limited to, spelling out dot for these social media platforms that use a period in the names to avoid URL creation or sharing screenshots of your handle on a promoted social media platform. Example, Instagram spelling out dot com slash username, that is prohibited. Or if you share a screenshot from another platform that has your handle in it, that's a violation. So it goes on, what is not a violation of this policy? It says we recognize that certain social media platforms provide alternative experiences to Twitter and allow users to post content to Twitter from these platforms. In general, any type of cross posting to our platform is not a violation of this policy, even from the prohibited sites listed above. Additionally, we allow paid advertisement promotion for any of the prohibited social media platforms. So if you post from the other platform, it's okay to bring people from the other platform to Twitter, or if you paid for advertisement, then it's okay. What happens if you violate this policy? Tweet deletion and temporary account locks. If violations of this policy are an isolated incident or first offense, we may take a number of actions ranging from requiring deletion of one or more tweets to temporarily locking accounts. Any subsequent offenses will result in permanent suspension. Temporary suspension. If violations of this policy are included in your bio and or account name, we will temporarily suspend your account and require changes to your profile to no longer be in violation. Subsequent violations may result in permanent suspension. So according to this post here, there are millions of Twitter accounts that violate this policy. So what does this mean? Well, it means that we have to be extra careful when posting anything on Twitter. I'm a content creator and I create content on multiple platforms and I'm not trying to move people from Twitter onto another platform. I mean, I want them to come to YouTube to watch my videos, but I don't want them to leave or stop using Twitter. And I also create content on Instagram, TikTok. I, I create content on multiple platforms. I want people to follow or subscribe to me everywhere that they are. And so if you're on Twitter and you're on Instagram, I want to tweet, follow me on Instagram too. But according to this policy, I can't. I also want you to know all of the places where you can find me. And a lot of people use a service like Linktree for this. That way you can have one link in your bio on all of your socials that sends people to a single page that lists all of your info and all of your links. But according to this policy, you can't do that either. And what I keep going back to in this policy is at the very beginning, Twitter is where the public conversation is happening. But you're limiting the conversation that we can have. I'm not forcing people to click on a link, but I'm giving them options. So here's the good news. This policy and all of these tweets were only up for about 10 hours before they just vanished. Then we get this tweet from the Twitter safety profile. It says, should we have a policy preventing the creation of or use of existing accounts for the main purpose of advertising other social media platforms? 
pretty much everyone said no. So to me, this was yet another knee-jerk reaction from Elon Musk, a policy put in place without any vetting or thought behind its consequences. In fact, the policy itself may even go against European regulations. But what happens next in the timeline? Well, Elon Musk posts a Twitter poll asking if he should step down as head of Twitter. The results were actually closer than I expected, but the majority said yes. Even Mr. Beast had to chime in about this policy. So what does that mean for the future? Well, the fact is that you can be suspended or banned from any platform at any time for any reason. A platform can suddenly change all of their rules and there's nothing that you can do about it. Now, as a content creator, I rely on my audience. And if I'm suddenly cut off from a platform, I lose that audience because I didn't own that list of people. The platform has always owned that. So my goal is to get people to follow me on multiple platforms and ultimately to subscribe to my newsletter because that's the one thing that I do own. I have control of the email addresses that are subscribed to my newsletter and I can communicate with that audience however I want to. And that's the one thing that can't be taken from me. But I'm not here to ask you to subscribe to my newsletter. There is a link in the description. But I want to help you create a foolproof way of getting people access to all of your links. So back to that Twitter policy. It would ban third-party social media link aggregators such as Linktree or Link.bio. What's significant about this? Well, they can easily tell if you're using one of these link aggregators because of the link itself. You see on Linktree, you get a link that starts with Linktree slash whatever your name is. Now, Twitter can easily spot this in your bio or in your post. They see Linktree and you're suspended or banned. So what you need is your own personal website that has all of your links. That will give you a unique URL that Twitter can't keep you from using. They didn't say anything in this policy about links to personal websites. And everyone knows that personal websites are going to have links to other places. So that's what I've come up with for you. I've created Gentree, a free link and bio generator. With this, you can have a unique or even custom URL or domain name. You're not going to get Gentry slash whatever or anything like that. Your URL will be unique and it could even be a custom domain. I'm going to step you through exactly how to do this. And at the end, you'll have your own custom website that you can share anywhere. And again, the key here is that you'll have a link that is not associated with any link aggregators, which is something that even Linktree cannot do. Here's a question that was asked on Linktree's website. Can I change the Linktree URL to a custom domain? And here's the answer. At this time, we do not offer a custom domain feature to remove Linktree from your URL. So let me show you how to generate your free link in bio page. I got a lot of inspiration for this project from an article on CSS tricks by Cassidy Williams about how to hack the deploy to Netlify button. There's a link in the description to the article and be sure to follow Cassidy as well. First of all, go to Gentry, that's G-E-N-T-R dot E-E. -E. There's a link in the description. So we have a form here on the left and a preview of what the page will look like on the right. First, let's fill in this basic info, name, handle, title, about, and avatar. So I'll just put my name in here. Handle is code stacker title. And then I have my avatar already in here. Now this needs to be a URL that is on the internet. So this could be your GitHub avatar, your Twitter avatar, your Instagram avatar. It could be an image saved in OneDrive or Google Drive. It just needs to be a public URL to an image. So paste that in there. And we can alter the page styles, but first let's add some links so that you can see what that looks like. For the links, we have two options, small, large, or both. So let me just do both so you can see what they look like. So I'll put in my link there and then add. So now you can see the small links will be at the top just under your info. So these should be your most popular platforms so that they are easy to find for your visitors. And then the large links are for everything else. So if we go down here, you can see that there are tons to choose from or just choose website for something generic. So let me add another one. Now you can sort these however you want just by dragging and dropping. So I want YouTube to always be first. So I'll put that at the top and you can see that it's reordered it in the preview as well. So let's check out the styles. We can change the border radius. Right now it's square rounded, like we, we can go all the way around it. It's hard to see the avatar is actually a circle as well. This is a dark background. So I actually have a light and dark mode for this as well. So let's go to light mode and check it out. So we can see rounded is everything is rounded and we can go to square. Everything is completely square. 
I'm gonna go back to square rounded, which is just a rounded off corners. Cool. So let's change the color style. There are a bunch of colors here to choose from. Let's see, lime. Let's go with sky. That looks pretty good. Let's check out indigo. That looks pretty cool as well. So as I said, every page has a dark theme and a light theme toggle, and it will default to the user's preferred theme as set in their operating system settings. All right, so we filled everything out. We have it how we want, and now it's time to deploy. So if we go down here to the bottom, we'll see three things that we need to do. Our first step is to sign up for GitHub if we don't already have a GitHub account, and then we'll sign up for Netlify if we don't already have an account, and then we'll deploy it. And so the GitHub and Netlify accounts are completely free. There is no credit card required. So if you don't have these, pause the video, sign up for GitHub, sign up for Netlify, and then come back and we'll deploy. All right, so you've signed up, let's deploy. And this is the easiest part. Netlify makes it so simple. This just takes about one minute to build and then we'll get our custom URL. So we're gonna connect to GitHub and then we can customize our repository name. You can just go ahead and leave it at Gentry template, but I already have a repository named that. So I'm just gonna say Gentry template test and then we'll save and deploy. Again, this only takes about a minute to build. We go Now our site is deployed and you'll see your URL here. So if we click on that, Here's the site that we built. Again, we can toggle the light mode and dark mode. Now the default URL from Netlify is usually pretty strange and most likely you're gonna to wanna to customize it. So mine is illustriousdusk3e7138.netlify.app. That's pretty hard to remember. So all we have to do is go to domain settings and then we can customize this domain. So under options right here, we can edit site name and we can change this to anything that's not already taken and will end up being whatever you choose .netlify.app. You can even change it completely to any custom domain that you have. Now domain names aren't free, so if you want to have your own custom domain, you will have to buy that, but it's not necessary. Whatever you choose .netlify.app is enough to qualify as a personal website and it's not associated with any third-party link aggregators and that is what is important. Now in the future, I'm sure you're going to want to update your site by removing, adding, or reordering things. So that can easily be done right here in the Netlify dashboard. So in the dashboard, we can go over to site settings and then environment variables. And if you see this screen here, just migrate environment variables and you'll see all of your environment variables here and we can change them. So for instance, if I want to change my name, we can select this down we can click the little I and see the name that's here. And if we go to options, edit, we can then change that, save it. Now, after we've saved it, we will need to redeploy. So let's go up to deploys and then trigger a deploy here. Let's just deploy our site. And this will take just a minute to build and then we can see our updates. And there we go. Now, if you want to add new links, you might want to edit this on GitHub. So if you open up this repository on GitHub and then go to the netlify.toml file, this file contains all of the available options. So we can edit this file and any changes we make in here will override whatever is in Netlify. So let's say we want to change the name here. We'll uncomment this line by removing the hashtag and then let's change this back to just my first and last name. And then let's also add a new link. I'm going to add my Instagram link and that's gonna be the large link. So that's instagram.com slash code stacker. And then if we scroll down to the bottom, we can commit these changes. And then Netlify will automatically detect the change and rebuild your site. You can see here it detected the change to the Netlify Toml and it republished it. So there we go. Now the name is back to just my first and last name and we now have an Instagram link. I hope this project will help you provide your information to your audience freely. There's one thing that I'll ask from you. I've added this project to Product Hunt. There's a link in the description. Please upvote it, share it on your socials, and help me help others keep their content freely available. If this video was helpful, give it a like and subscribe for more videos like this.